So I have a list here of 10 hidden iOS 18 features that everyone should know, but apparently they're not that obvious. So a lot of people might have missed these features. So we're gonna go through this together so we can get full use of our iPhone with iOS 18. So let's get right into the first one. So the first one is smart widgets. I've definitely heard of this, but I'm actually not using it right now. iOS 18 now lets widgets automatically adapt based on time and activity. Okay, so we're just gonna go to our home screen and then long press and click edit in the top left corner and then press add widget and apparently here there's a section called smart widget or smart stack I guess. Oh wait, I actually haven't used it. I mean, I feel like this should be pretty obvious but I haven't used it so far. Okay, so you only have three options. You have the smallest widget, the medium widget and the really big one. I think we're gonna do maybe the medium why is it a picture of myself okay and now we have your smart stack oh okay so it's like an album and then if you scroll you go to your recently played podcasts and then you have your notes clock so it's automatically gonna display the most relevant widget depending on what time of day it is this is actually pretty cool you can also edit this widget if you just press it and then you have smart rotate on or you could also turn it off you also have widget suggestions and if you want to remove any of these widgets you can just press the line next to the widget i think you can also add a new widget by pressing the plus button in the corner maybe we want to do notion widget yeah and it's gonna add it to the smart stack so we can fully customize this smart stack okay next we have enhanced focus filters so now you can block or prioritize specific information based on your current activity so let's try this i have actually not used it i already feel like i missed so many of the new ios 18 features okay so if we go to settings and search for focus mode if we go into a specific focus mode like morning routine so here we can obviously choose what people can contact you and which apps can send notifications when you have the focus mode on at the bottom it says focus filters so let's add a filter because i currently don't have any okay so for example if we have messages we can choose exactly who we want to see messages from so for example you might not want to receive work related messages but messages from a family member might be okay <laughs> my puppy just walked up and lay down on my legs like she is so sweet and she just wants to cuddle okay so we're gonna turn on filter by people list and then press add let's do another one so for your mailbox you can choose which emails you want to receive notifications from another filter we can add is a calendar so we can choose which calendar we want to show in the focus mode so for example in the morning we might only want to have our personal calendar showing notifications and not a work calendar this means you obviously need to have different calendar groups in your calendar settings but i mean that's really easy to set up and then other app filters we can use are music and safari so in safari we can do a profile so i've set up two profiles one for personal and one for school so in the morning i might only want to use my personal profile okay and now we have all our focus filters set up this is also a pretty obvious hack but I obviously didn't have it set up. Okay, now, let me share another really useful hack. This time of year, a lot of us are upgrading to a new phone, whether that is the iPhone 16 or a second-hand phone. But with that, it comes a few challenges like how to transfer your data. And if you get a second-hand phone, it might actually be locked. So I'm gonna show you a hack that solves all of these problems and a lot more. It's an all-in-one software called Dr. Phone and they're sponsoring this video. With Dr. Phone, you can easily bypass forgotten passcodes and it's actually a really simple process done on a laptop and works for both iOS and Android. With this, you can also remove an iCloud activation lock. You just plug in your phone to the laptop, launch the software and follow the simple steps. And in a matter of just minutes, you can unlock your locked phone. Even if you accidentally forgot the passcode or got a secondhand phone that was locked. And also to make switching to a new iPhone easier, you can use the transfer phone option in Dr. Phone. So you just connect both the old and new phone and select the specific data you want to transfer. 
and it's done in no time whether it's contacts, photos, or other apps. I'm always stressed when transferring data to a new phone because I'm afraid something is gonna get lost but I feel more in control of this because you have everything on the screen in front of you and if you were ever to lose your phone data, for example from breaking your phone, you can recover everything through Dr. Phone. So just click the link in my description or search Dr. Phone on Google to try it out yourself. Okay and this next one is actually really cool. Now we have live voice translation in messages without having to open an external app. For example, we have this conversation between me and my mom and it's in Swedish. So let's see if we can translate. Oh, it says Swedish is not currently supported for translation. Okay, that was a like pretty useless hack. I mean, we have a bunch of languages, but not Swedish. So I guess this is useful if someone's texting you in any of these languages like Spanish, French, German. But if we have a conversation in English, it translates to Spanish, but you can also choose any other language. I mean, I can't tell if this is accurate or not because I don't speak French. I guess this could be useful if you get a text in a different language. You save a lot of time not having to copy and paste it onto an external app. But if you wanted to, you could also open this in translate so then it's gonna open the translate app if you want to add even more text okay so the next hack is lock screen shortcuts i do know about this one i've already made videos about this and i do find it really useful we can now remove the camera and flashlight from our lock screen which is like honestly a huge feature because this has been on iphones for so many years now we press the empty plus buttons and we can add literally like any shortcut card and we can open any app. You can choose between all your apps here. So if you have an app that you use a lot, you can now put it on your lock screen. I mean, one app I think is really useful is the weather app. If you're on Snapchat a lot, you could add Snapchat here or Safari, Notes. There's so many apps you could add. However, if you have an iPhone with the action button, you can already open an app through pressing the action button. But I guess with this, you could add an additional app if you have multiple apps you wanna open from the lock screen and depending on what apps you have downloaded to your phone you're gonna get different options here for the lock screen controls you can open ChatGPT voice right from the lock screen this is actually really cool and we can do a stopwatch it just opens this page and you can start a stopwatch in like one second and for the ChatGPT option either you could use it for just random facts can you tell me a random fact about multi poos a fun fact about multi poos a cross between a maltese and a poodle is that they tend to have a hypoallergenic coat. Or you could use it for an actual useful question that you might need help with. Can you please help me with what I should buy for my boyfriend for his birthday? You could consider something like wireless earbuds, a smartwatch, or a sleek phone stand charger. This might not be the most hidden iOS 18 feature, but I feel like it's one of the most useful. Yes. But moving on to the next one, we have interactive notifications. I usually swipe notifications away, but then I have to remember like every single notification because I feel like I'm just always forgetting something if I just swipe it away. But now you can actually straight from your lock screen interact with the notifications. So I guess for example, for the screen recording notifications, we can view it or delete deleted and then for emails we can reply to the email straight from the lock screen we have a medication reminder we can log it as taken or log as skipped and also choose remind me in 10 minutes so this obviously doesn't work with any notifications like this one doesn't have any options and then if we get a message we can actually now reply to a message through the notification center so yeah we can type anything and add any files or pictures and just send it and you don't have to go into the messages app so yeah if you wake up with a lot of messages this is a really easy way to just go through all the messages this next hack it might not seem like a big deal and and something that's not really new but we now have improved face id with a mask or glasses and I mean since this is just a small update many people don't know about this so with iOS 18 face ID can now handle more challenging scenarios which is really appreciated because it's so annoying when you're trying to unlock your phone and it's like loading for a few seconds especially if you're wearing both glasses and a mask the face ID in iOS 18 can now recognize your eyes a lot quicker okay so we're just gonna go into the face ID settings and then turn on face ID 
with a mask and this is a feature that you can set up when you're starting up your iPhone but I always skip it but it's good to do it so in case you ever wear a mask or it doesn't even have to be a mask because we obviously don't use masks as much anymore it could literally be like a big winter jacket or a scarf like covering half your face so yeah, it's just like a normal face ID here you can see it also says add glasses Okay, face ID is now set up. So I think you could add multiple glasses if you wear different types. Okay, but now let's try this. I'm literally gonna try to cover half my face. Okay, so the phone is locked. <laughs> And it worked! Well, okay, so then we have one-handed keyboard where you can basically use just one hand to type with a keyboard. If you search for keyboards in your settings, you're gonna see an option called one-handed keyboard. And here you can choose, mine is turned off, but you can do left or right depending on which hand you usually type with. I usually do my right hand, so I'm gonna do right. I mean, this is really useful for me because I have the iPhone 16 Pro Max and people always ask me how I'm like, able to type with it. I just always type with both my hands because like I literally can't reach the other end if I'm typing with one hand. But I mean with this, I'm pretty sure I can reach all of the keyboard. Although I don't know if this is new for iOS 18. I mean, maybe it's upgraded for iOS 18, but I feel like this has existed. But you could also turn it on without going into settings if you are just in notes and typing. If you press the globe, you can choose left or right. Now, I don't think anyone has missed that you now have a fully customizable control center, but maybe you didn't know about all of these controls that you can now add to the control center so to customize you just long press and then this is what's gonna show up and as you can see like I have so many controls here you can also customize each control by dragging it out a little bit and making it bigger so a few controls I find really useful are first of all the dark mode because we can just easily switch between dark and light mode and then opening a quick node so I don't have to go into the notes app to start a new node because if I get an idea or just a thought I want to write down which happens like literally multiple times a day this is so much more convenient than having to go into my phone and into the notes app it doesn't sound like a lot but on the way there I would probably get distracted and then of course you have your focus filters here I find the vehicle motion cues really useful and then I can also see how much storage is being used on my phone so I'm currently using 92 gigabytes previously when this wasn't available in the control center you would have to go into settings to check it but i never went into settings to check it and then one day i would wake up and my phone didn't have any storage so i feel like this might actually be more useful than you think because you can be proactive and like delete photos if you notice your storage is going up but probably my favorite feature of this is you now have your own little section for the home app if you control any lights in your home with the Apple Home app, you can now just check it through the control center and you can also choose to open any app through the control center. So if you just press add a control, and open up, it's under shortcuts, you could do like a cafe app, like espresso house. When we're at espresso house and want to order, we can just swipe down and go into the app by the control center. Also in iOS 18, you have advanced privacy settings and this might be something you are not really noticing because maybe that's the problem. Um, and I feel like you should at least be aware of it and how you can change it. Now in iOS 18, you have permission summaries and enhanced app tracking transparency. If we go into settings and then press privacy and security. And here we can also see which apps are using Bluetooth, camera, microphone. So if there's one I'm not comfortable with having access to my camera, I can just remove it right here. Here in settings, we can see it says app privacy report. And this is actually turned off for me, but let's turn it on. Um, and now report information will appear as apps are used. So yeah, it just says this is designed to give you a more complete picture of how the apps you use treat your data. So if you're concerned about that, how your data is used, this could be a really useful setting to actually turn on. And I didn't know this even existed. Through this, you can also see whether an app may be sharing your data with 
other parties and continuing speaking of privacy ios 18 has a lot of new privacy options and one of those is the hidden apps i think everybody knows but this is a folder you can find at the bottom of your app library to unlock it you need face id or touch id so on any individual app you want to hide you have to long press that app i just press require face id and i can choose only require face id if i want to still have it in my app library or i can choose hide and require face id now you can see it just removed it from my app library so you might be thinking this is a feature for like hiding apps you don't want your family members to see or your friends if you have anyone like going through your phone but what I like to use it for is honestly hiding social media apps that I don't want to use too much. Even if I don't have them on my home screen, it's still so easy to access the app through the app library, which makes me scroll TikTok like so much. If you're trying to reduce social media time, this is actually one of the best hacks for doing that. But I definitely think when the app isn't visible in my app library, I don't use it as much. Previously, I would have to delete Instagram and then re-download it every time I wanted to use it but it also made me lose all my drafts so I actually find this really useful because now I can hide the app and not have it visible to me so I don't get tempted to use it every day but it's still downloaded on my phone so yeah but those were 10 iOS 18 hacks let me know if you already knew of all of these but I think it's always fun customizing my phone and I feel like iPhone has had like huge upgrades also comment if you have any other favorite iOS 18 hacks. I kind of want to make this into a series. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> Bye!